Hi, this is Arvid from EconExplix, and I can't wait to show you the results of today's paper. You will see how corruption in an Indonesian government program was reduced by 50% by empowering citizens to stand up for their rights. And how was this done? Simply by giving them more information about their rights. But not all information is created equal. As we will see, some types of information are more effective than others. In this video, I will first discuss the corruption we are dealing with, then discuss the experiment, and then show the results. So let's get started. The setting of the paper is in Indonesia. There is a government program called the Rastra that gives rice at one-fifth of the price to poor households. It is one of the biggest government programs in Indonesia, providing nearly 7% of the population with subsidized food. And each household that is identified as eligible has a right to 15 kilos of subsidized rice. But while the central government buys the rice, it is local officials that distribute it to villagers. But on average, households only get 5.3 kilos of the 15 kilos they are supposed to get. So they only get one third of their subsidies. So where does the rest of the rice go to? Well, the missing rice happens at the local level and can be divided into two categories. First, it can go to other households. Local officials are allowed to give part of their rice to households who should qualify for the program, but who were not selected. And this type of rice accounts for about 6.7 kilos. Now, there is still a further distinction depending on whether these households are actually eligible or not. But we are not going to discuss this further as the authors cannot separate these categories. Then there's also the pure corruption. This is local officials or their appointees stealing rice for themselves or their associates. The authors estimate that about three kilos of the rice goes missing in this way. So to tackle corruption, the Indonesian government joined up with five economists. Banerjee, a Nobel Prize winner, Hannah, Kyle, Olken, and Samarta. And together they set up an experiment. They sent cards with information to citizens about their subsidy rights. These cards contained information about the amount of kilos they should get and the price they are supposed to pay. It is worth saying that only 30% of targeted households actually received the cards. That seems like a very low number, and it is. But many of these households live in remote villages that are hard to reach. And so when the postal system cannot find them, the local officials are supposed to distribute the card. But as you can imagine, some local officials simply did not do this. And there is evidence that some officials just kept the cards in their office, such that citizens were never informed of their rights. So was this program successful in reducing corruption? Indeed it was. Now, the authors find that there was little impact on the food that was diverted to other households. So we will focus on corruption in the targeted households. So let's switch to a graphic illustration of the results. The authors find that in villages where households received the card, on average, households were able to obtain 1.3 kilos more rice. So this is quite a success because it's an increase of more than 20% in subsidies. Especially if you keep in mind that only 30% of targeted households received the card in the first place. So why does giving information help? Well, the authors find that the evidence indicates that citizens simply felt more empowered to speak up to their local official and bargain for their rightful allocation. For example, the citizens brought the carts along when getting the rice, and citizens also lodged more protests. But as I said in the introduction, the type of information also matters. For example, the authors created a variation of the experiment where information about the cart program was also made public in the village. The authors did this by hanging up posters in the village. And these posters contained information about the carts and included a list of people from the village who could get the subsidized rice. So now, not only do you get a cart with your rights sent to you, you also know that other people in the village are aware. 
so you could talk to them and coordinate. And the authors find that providing information solely to the person, but without the public information, increased rights received by households by about 0.8 kilos. But having the cards combined with the additional public information increased rice bags to households by about 1.6 kilos. And this increase represents a decrease in corruption of more than 50% as missing rice bags now go from 3 kilos to about 1.4 kilos. And while the authors cannot exactly pinpoint the mechanism, it seems that increasing the awareness that others know about it as well helps people to speak up for their rights. It could also make it easier to coordinate with others. So the results of this paper are promising. And the Indonesian government then took the results of the study and sent such information cards to all eligible households starting in 2014. But another way to combat corruption is to take the distribution out of the local officials' hand completely. And that is what the Indonesian government did starting in 2017 when they introduced electronic debit cards. And they gave these to households with the subsidy on it. And then the households could go get the rice themselves from a private vendor. They no longer needed to get it from the local official. And this proved to be even more effective, increasing subsidies by more than 46%. Check out my video on this for more details.